my friends. We are getting started with today's live stream, Wednesday. So it is Intuitive Eating Wisdom Wednesday. I'm going to double check to just make sure that I am in the right group. So as you come in, please say hello. Let us see if we're here. Hold on, hold on. We're going to talk about a really great topic. So if you're here, go ahead and say hello. Yeah, we are here. We are live. We are live. Okay. Um, so much to say, so much to share. Would love if you are joining me live for you to say hello in the comments. Firstly, I just want to welcome all our new members. We've got a lot of new members every day coming into our group every week, and I'm thrilled. Would love to learn a little bit more about each and every one of you. So, number one, when I do my weekly trainings, I very much love interaction. You give me energy. So if you are ever joining me on a weekly training, definitely come to the chat. Say hello. Tell me where you're calling from, where you're joining me from, um, and let's have conversation. Number two, if you're new to the group or even if you're here a long time and we are not connected on Facebook, meaning we're not Facebook friends, um, it means that I may have not been able to send you a Facebook request, friend request, so please send me one so we can connect via Messenger. I very much want to learn more about you, your struggles, your challenges with food, your goals, so I can continue to create content. So please Facebook message me and um, Facebook friend me so we can connect. Um, okay, couple of other um, announcements. Number one, if you're watching this on replay, hashtag replay, answer the questions that I'm gonna be sharing with you today. <clears throat> And of course, today's topic is all about food for the soul. I mean, I did, um, you know, uh, put in the title, it's it's all about chocolate, right? Like, you know, eating chocolate without guilt, but it's up so much more. It's about so much more than chocolate. Um, but I'll get to that in just a moment. One more announcement. Next week, Monday, I am kicking off a five-day online event free to you. It is called End Yo-Yo Dieting Challenge. I encourage you very much to register for this challenge. Why? because I'm gonna be teaching you. I'm gonna be your coach for the week and I'm gonna be teaching you each and every day. Number one, not just how to end yo-yo dieting, but really how to tap back into your inner wisdom and learn to trust yourself with food again. So I encourage you to please join me and register at the link. If you don't have the link, then let me know. Send a message down below this video, send me a direct message. Either way, I'll share the link with you. Um, you're going to want to register because I do have a workbook I put together for you and that's going to be coming to you through email and other strategies and things like that through email. So I highly encourage you to register for the event. Um, if you're not sure if you're registered, let me know. I'll check it out for you. But either way, I hope to see you there. Um, for those of you who will be joining me live every day next week, I will have a special bonus for you as well. So I really do encourage you to come live because learning really happens best when you're interacting with me. Now, the replays are fine. The replays are great. Everybody, you know, it depends what kind of a go-getter you are, but if you're able to join me live, it's preferred. So we will be meeting live next week, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern, Tuesday and Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Again, you'll have all that information in your email once you register. Replays will be available if you register. Um, and otherwise, yeah, that's that. So for those of you who will be with me live, would love to, um, yeah, we'll, we'll just have a bonus for you. So anyways, I want to entice you to come live because I love it when you're live. So today, let's jump into today's topic. Today's topic is how do you eat chocolate and not feel guilty? Now, again, um, I say chocolate, but for it could be any food for you, right? When I say the word chocolate, though, what word comes to mind? Now, I um, noted in the chat, there was a chat that was started um, a private chat for this particular event, and a lot of people said, it's yummy. A lot of people said, you know, um, I really like milk chocolate, but I can't eat milk chocolate. I shouldn't eat milk chocolate. I only should eat dark chocolate. Some other um, individuals shared how, you know, they love it, but they can't keep it in the house. So there's lots of mixed feelings around it, right? Um, it, I believe it depends on where you're on, where you're at a, on your journey. Um, Joanne had posted in the chat that she's now able to have chocolate in the house and she um, opts for a dark chocolate. She 
does understand the health benefits for it, um, but even the milk chocolate, she does not um, not trust herself with that anymore. Well, we've, Joanna and I have worked um, for a while on her achieving that. Um, in any event, if your mind automatically goes to something quote unquote bad or food slash chocolate slash any food is a reward for you or it's a treat that you allow yourself to have on only certain occasions or something you wish you could have but you don't think you can so your words are I can't have it then chances are you have not been eating intuitively or thinking um, in a neutrality way, in a neutral way around chocolate, or again, it could be any food for you. Your thing may not be chocolate, it might be cake, it might be ice cream. But when we constantly think about food in a way that is harmful to you, instead of nourishment for your body, your mind and your soul, you have an increased chance of feeling guilty after you eat this food. And in your mind, to you, it's not just eating this food, it's indulging, right? Like, I really have a hard time when people say, you know, what food do you indulge in? That has such a negative connotation of indulging is sinful. And we don't want to make that connection with food. So what does food guilt, um, what is food guilt and what does it look like for you? So feel free to share in the comments, whether you're here with me live or hashtag replay, what is food guilt to you? What does it look like for you? How does it show up in your life? I would love to know. And understand that by you participating in these live streams, by chatting in the comments, you will be giving a gift to somebody else because somebody else will be reading what you're writing and say, oh my God, I feel the same way. Wow, I thought I was alone. Nobody is alone on this journey. You may think that you're alone, but you're not. So guilt is a feeling that we get after we feel that we do something morally wrong, right? Like maybe you broke a promise you had with a friend or you lied about a situation. The feeling of guilt arrives in you, in you or for you after you do a certain act that you feel like, uh, you know, I probably shouldn't have done that and you make an apology or, you know, hopefully you apologize if you've hurt somebody, right? Guilt can also present itself when you feel like you've quote unquote gone off track from your goals or your routines. I say air quotes because when we use words like that in relation to food, it's very much uh, tinged with diet mentality. You may have felt bad about yourself for not being as productive as you would like to have been in a particular day or that you were in the past. But when it comes to food, Guilt is going to continue to show up when we think that we've done something wrong or bad in relation to eating something, or you haven't followed your diet that you had in mind, the diet that you were following. And so when you do those types of things, you feel guilty. And just like any other type of guilt, it's often followed by an apology or a promise to do better next time, to do better tomorrow. So you might hear yourself saying, oh, I can't stop eating these appetizers. I'm, I'm just so gross right now. I'm not going to eat anything tomorrow. You may say, oh, I can't believe that I let myself eat all that. Tomorrow's another day. You might say, why did I eat that chocolate? I've been so good and I ate that chocolate. Now I've been so bad. I'm off track. I mean, these are just some examples. I would love to hear what some of the thoughts are. What is some of the internal conversation that you have? Put it in the chat box, right? Having these thoughts when it comes to food, specifically labeling food junk. I did a previous live stream about junk food. If you, if you, um, didn't see it, let me know and I'll tag you in it. Um, but society, you know, is, is causing us to label society, diet culture, right? Helps us to label foods as good or bad, healthy, unhealthy, junk, etc. right? And what are some of those foods? Those foods are typically your chocolate, your sweets, snack foods, right? And it can totally send you into a cycle that is so hard for you to get out of. And it goes like this. You're restricting that food because you're dieting or you're being good and you're not allowing yourself to eat those foods, even though you really like those foods, right? So let's just take an example of all week, you know, you're, you're restricting your food over the course of the week. Um, 
because you think in your mind, I'm doing something great for myself. I'm doing something great for my health. And then intense cravings start, right? Because the restriction was there. Because what do we know about restriction? Restriction ultimately causes deprivation, right? And so then you're like, okay, I'm just going to have one bite because that deprivation starts to loosen that quote unquote control, right? And you're like, okay, I'm just going to have one. And then unintentionally you begin to have another, 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 and you're overindulging as we say in diet world, right? And then what happens? You feel guilty. And then the next day you're like, I got to restrict. You excessively restrict the next day. And this cycle repeats over and over again. Have you been in this cycle? Have you been in this cycle? Yes or no? Use the chat. When you let the cycle of food guilt go on for too long, it can turn into disordered eating and an, ex and, and, and excessive pattern of unhealthy eating habits, right? It's why it's so, so important to understand where this food guilt comes from and how you can get rid of it. So, the why can't I eat chocolate without feeling guilt or shame? Ask yourself that. I love chocolate. So why every time that I eat chocolate, I feel guilt or I feel shame? There are certain labels that are out there around certain foods. And those foods become forbidden if you want to be quote unquote good or quote unquote healthy, right? And so these, these labels create certain habits around our eating, again, driven by diet culture that really allow you to have the feelings of guilt and uh, around food and around what you're eating. So let's dig into some of those reasons. Number one, labeling your food, inheriting all of these food rules. It's no secret that some foods are labeled healthier than others by society. Chocolate is definitely one of them. Diet culture has allowed society to believe that foods are that are higher in calories, that are higher in sugar, higher in fat, higher in carbs, are to be avoided because they're bad or unhealthy compared to other foods. So you would hear yourself saying, you know, wow, that chocolate looks so good, but I can't have it. It's not good for me. Or that milk chocolate, I love it, but I can only eat dark chocolate. I can't eat milk chocolate, right? Now, between you and me, we all know that dark, well, maybe we don't all know, so forgive me for saying that, but yes, most people do are aware that dark chocolate with a, a percentage of cocoa greater than 70% is healthful for us. It's full of flavonols and antioxidants and yeah, but it doesn't mean milk chocolate has to be on the no allowed, not allowed list either, right? It just doesn't. But diet culture has certain foods like chocolate divided into milk chocolate bad, dark chocolate good. When we find ourselves believing that food has moral value, it's going to make us feel shame for wanting it, for craving it, <coughs> and of course, for eating it. So that's number one. Again, why do we have a problem eating chocolate without having guilt or shame? And again, it doesn't have to be chocolate. It could be, you know, what would that, what would that food be for you? Because believe it or not, there are some people that actually don't like chocolate. So what is the food for you? I'm just using the chocolate as an example here because it's so very common. But let me know what food that is for you. Like my daughter doesn't like chocolate. So she would be like, no, I have no problem with chocolate, but I have a problem with fill in the blank, ice cream, maybe she would say, although she doesn't because I've taught her how to be an intuitive eater or to continue to be an intuitive eater the way she was born, which is what I wish for every one of you and your children and grandchildren. Okay, number two, food and body image. If you find yourself uh, constantly calling yourself weak or unworthy of, of eating certain foods or because you've eaten certain foods, then you're more likely to experience some level of guilt when you do end up eating those foods. Dieting can lead to food obsession and needing to follow an eating schedule to an extreme length. So when you do eat something that diet culture deems as bad for you, i.e. chocolate, sweets, or any other quote-unquote off-limit snack, you start to label yourself as a failure, as lacking willpower, and you feel guilty for not being able to quote-unquote stick to your goals, right? So you might hear yourself saying, I can't believe I let myself eat that. I'm so horrible for not sticking to my diet. You might say, I've been so bad today. I ate way too much, fill in the blank, in this example, chocolate. I didn't exercise. I don't deserve it, etc." This is all the speak of diet culture. 
Restriction is the next thing I want to talk about. Excessive restriction of food that you would like to eat can also lead to a lot of food guilt and the binge restrict restrict binge cycle. So when you don't give yourself what we call unconditional permission to eat, the foods that you enjoy, eventually you will give in, hands down, I'm telling you. And then you feel that lack of quote unquote control and you overindulge past the point of comfortable fullness. This eventually leads to feelings of guilt, feelings of shame, Oh my God, I got to start over again. Why did I just eat all that? I got to skip my next snack, my next meal. I got to burn it off, etc. External factors. Well, when we eat without truly paying attention to our body's needs, it's easy to continue to pick on the, you know, to pick on foods around us, only resulting in then a feeling of guilt when we realize it afterwards. Oh my God, what did I just eat? I, I totally wasn't even, I was oblivious to it. So, what are some of the external factors? External factors can include things like physical distractions. So you're watching TV, you're reading while you're eating, you're talking on the phone, and also emotions or situations that you are in that might lead to the mindless distracted eating. So let's chat about some physical distractions. If you're eating with distractions, again, you have your phone in hand, you're you know, watching TV, you're looking at your email, or you know, you're eating out of boredom, it can be very difficult to truly allow yourself to feel your body's signals. You're distracted. Your body, you're not tuned into those signals of hunger and fullness, right? And then you end up eating more than you physically, nutritionally even need. So why, you might say to yourself something like, you know, oh, I ate the entire bag of popcorn during the movie, you know, and I'm not feeling so well. You were distracted. You weren't paying attention. You were on autopilot eating and now you feel guilt, okay? Emotional thoughts. So oftentimes, food is used as a way to cope with some negative emotions that you're feeling, perhaps for comfort. Um, and then what happens? And, I mean, comfort is just one thing. There's a whole slew of emotional eating triggers I, I work with my clients through. But whatever those emotional eating triggers are for you, after the fact, now you feel guilty, you feel shame, you feel hopeless because you didn't listen to your signals, right? And guess what? Whatever the trigger was that caused you to reach for food, after you've numbed yourself with food and you've come out of that, the issue is still there. That original pain is still there. Plus now the emotional, mental pain of guilt and shame, right? Think about that for just a second. Food does not need to be earned. So similarly, you might look at food as a reward could be a reward for exercise. It could be a, a reward just for being productive. It could be a reward such as a pity party. Oh my God, look at all I went through today. What a hard day I deserve, right? And then afterwards you're like, oh, I can't believe I just did that. I'm trying to be so quote unquote good. And you feel guilty, right? This is all part of your diet mentality. Guilt around food is an emotion that comes from ignoring your body's signals, your hunger fullness cues, from constantly feeling like you need to diet, that you need to change your appearance, from having foods on your not allowed list, those forbidden foods. And then this easily leads you to think that, well, I can't eat intuitively because I don't trust myself with these foods. And so there's a self-fulfilling prophecy right there. So in order to be rid of the feeling of guilt and shame, or that feeling that you've done something wrong is so, so important to number one, just acknowledge the situation. If you're feeling guilty about eating something, just recognize the guilt, identify the guilt, recognize that it's coming from diet culture. You didn't do anything wrong. You have not failed. Diet culture has failed you. So instead of letting the guilt take over, just allow yourself to truly feel the feelings and understand where it's come from. We're going to be fighting back against diet culture next week in the end yo-yo dieting uh, challenge. So I do hope that you've registered for that because we're going to specifically talk about how to fight back against all of this. Stop justifying what you're eating. Food does not have to be earned. You're allowed to eat whenever your body is telling you it needs food. Remember about the concept of mindfulness. 
What is mindfulness? Mindfulness is paying attention moment to moment about your thoughts, your actions, etc., without judgment. How many times do we judge ourselves around what we eat, what we didn't eat, what we're doing, how much we exercise? Self-criticism and self-judgment, dieters, chronic dieters, people in recovery from dieting, they're really good at self-criticism and judging themselves. We need to leave that at the door. Please be careful with social media. It is so easy to fall into the diet traps that are out there because diet culture is everywhere. It is everywhere. And so it's so important to be on top of that. We are going to be talking about that also next week. Diet culture is everywhere. So how in the world do we fight back? We're going to dig into that. And we're going to do it together as a community because it, it, it happens in community. Support of each other. Food, eating, nourishment for your body in any capacity is never morally wrong. So guilt needs never to be a part of that. I'm going to repeat that. Food, eating, providing nourishment, I'll add, and pleasure and enjoyment from food for your body in any capacity is never morally wrong. And we do not need guilt to be a part of that. Food is not only there to fuel your body, it is also there to fuel your mind, to fuel your soul. If you are quote unquote craving something like chocolate or fill in the blank of your food, it's totally okay. It's more than okay to honor that feeling. I know that it's so hard. Someone posted before, right, about I don't keep certain type of chocolate in the house because I'll just eat the whole bag. Part of this process of recovering from dieting through the journey of intuitive eating is learning how to have that chocolate or any food in the house and not have to worry that you will just binge right through it. That is what I help my clients do. We're going to start that process next week. I hope you're going to be joining. I hope you're going to be joining me. It is a free event for you. And of course, if anybody is interested in learning more about what I do with my clients, in what capacity, because you really want to get this journey going for yourself, just reach out to me and we'll talk about it. But I do hope you're going to join me next week. So post below your comments on today's conversation. Share your own experiences and um, tag me in it. If you're on replay, hashtag replay and tag me and I'll be coming back to read all the comments and to respond to questions. All right, that's it for me today on Intuitive Eating Wisdom Wednesday. I hope this has given you some aha moments, certain things to think about. Please share below in the comments because it is helpful for me to know where you stand on all of these things. I will see you again real soon. If you need the link to sign up for next week's challenge, please let me know. Have a great rest of your day.